Welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am Dave Amano, your host. And if you listen to this podcast, you know that I love finding, curating, who I think are just really exciting, unique, different, go against the grain type of entrepreneurs. The ones that, that have the courage and the, the boldness to do just wild, crazy things that are making a, an awesome impact in the world. Uh, I have a great one today. I have Jen Marilla. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, David. I'm excited to be here. Really excited to have you here. Yeah. Uh, you are all those things I just said, and, and I'm going to mix in um, adventurous. I love that, right? Yeah. Uh, and, we, and so, you know, just so everybody knows, we're recording this end of May. So we're, we're and you're in New York City. I'm in upstate New York. Uh, <clears throat> different variations of the stay-at-home lockdown quarantine orders, whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. Um, so I know you're still doing great things, but I would imagine part of you feels locked up because you're uh, you're like the world traveler nonstop, <laughs> right? So how is that for you? Oh my God, I have this itch and I'm dying to scratch it. <laughs> imagine, I can imagine. I mean, I'm a type A extrovert um, and, you know, and I feel like just busting outside and doing a Forrest Gump run, but uh, <laughs> I can imagine you, you know? I look at the news every day and the only thing I'm looking for is for Trump to tell me that he's opening the borders or I can go to another country and it's going to be okay for me to travel with. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be like uh, the, 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 the first grader that is allowed to, you know, play outside on the first day of summer, right? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. and I mean, and like, look, truth be told, I've already booked two trips for later on in the year, I put insurance on it and I'm just like, I don't care. Like I, I need to just do that for myself or my sanity because I'm going crazy. Right. You're going, yeah. I mean, go, go to countries that, that don't have too much COVID, I guess. Right. So Mexico, uh, there you go. Uh, I, I read in your bio, which I'm going to read here in a second that you've been to, I think every continent except Antarctica, right? Yeah. 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 So maybe that's where you want to go. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> apparently COVID isn't there. In fact, there aren't any humans there. So like. Right. Yeah, well, you know, I read about that because I read, I was just doing some digging, you know, how many, uh, uh, what, what are the least, you know, po or, or the, the countries that have the least amount of COVID? And then I said continents. And they said Antarctica, there's there's zero cases. Right. Uh, and there are, there are actually about, I think they said a couple thousand people there, like scientists, right? Yes. But they... They, they go for like a year, right? Yeah. So they, they got there before this all started. Yeah. And nobody's left and no new people have come. So yeah. it's not there, right? Yeah. I don't know if you want to go to Antarctica. I mean, I have a good friend, Jack Daly, who uh, his goal first was to run a marathon in every state. Mm -hmm. um, and then he wanted to do uh, Ironman. He did all this crazy stuff. And then he, but then he also had a goal that he wanted to run a marathon on every continent. Oh, wow. And of course... Antarctica and they actually have they do they have one and he did yep. it he did it I mean I think oh, he wow. won in a big circle like 26 times pretty much and there's a window <laughs> there's a window when you can like fly there and go. I think I think they literally plow a mile <laughs> path and yeah, you yeah. run around it 26 times you know yeah, but <laughs> probably. um but he did it. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll go there someday, right? Knowing. Well, definitely someday I'll do it. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to stay during COVID and then get stuck up there because I don't like the cold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, Cu I'm a Cuban. My parents are Cuban immigrants. And yeah. I don't know why out of all 50 states. Yeah. They were like, oh, let's go to New Jersey. <laughs> like, right. Let's go freeze in New Jersey. I'm right. like, what? Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of thankful they didn't go to Florida either, but at the same time. <laughs> right, like, I know. I've chosen Hawaii. Yep. You know? Another like, island that would have been nice, right? Probably, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, come on. Yep. Um, so, well, you know, so all my grandparents are uh, from Sicily, which is another hot island. Right. Uh, and they come over to, you know, upstate New York, Rochester, which is yep. literally night and day. And, uh, uh, but you know, I asked him like, why'd you come here? You know, but they had, there was jobs, there was manufacturing yeah. jobs. They'd hire, yeah. they'd hire Sicilians, Italians at the time, which was, you know, uh, not happening all the time. And, uh, they just wanted to make a living, you know? So, yeah. but, uh, but at, at this point you're right. I mean, why don't, why don't we move to New Zealand? I don't know, but. <laughs> hey, I, uh, it's not, I haven't scratched it off my list. So don't be yep. surprised if a year from now you you send me a message and I'm like, hey, I'm in Hawaii. Well, you can do your <laughs> no. job from any place, right? The world is your home, right? The world is your office. Yes, exactly. Yep. exactly. So for those of you that don't know Jen, and uh, I, I, I'm sure if you don't, you will soon. She's really making some great headway in what she does. 
I'm going to read her bio. bio. So Jen Marilla, who is also known as the social girl traveler, she worked for a New York City corporate agency when she decided that she wanted to impact the world. She left her cubicle behind for flight miles. She calls herself an impact travel blogger. And for the past four years, she has been at 44 countries, six continents, and impacted the lives of over 13,500 people in these countries dispensing clean water filters. She is not your average blogger. She's trying to make a difference in the world. She works with social, sustainable, and eco-conscious brands. Jen also works with other entrepreneurs as a global online educator, teaching others how to build a brand and a business online to create the life they want. Her mission is to transform the lives of humankind to live lives of impact, purpose, and courage. If you want to learn more about her, uh, her website, very simple to remember, jenmarilla.com, M-O-R-I-L-L-A. And now, now uh, Marilla is how you would say your last name in, in, with in, in English. Yes. Uh, say, say, it, say it to me with a, with a Spanish, beautiful accent. Morilla. Oh, it sounds so nice. I love it. You're going to say that one more time before we go. All right. Morilla. Oh, my God. All right. I'll give you five minutes to stop. No, no, no. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, I learned, uh, you know, I read your bio, um, and, we, and we had talked a couple times before. Um, I guess I, I overlooked or didn't see the, the whole water filter thing. So you're not only like traveling and, and writing about your adventures and inspiring people to travel. Um, I mean, you're doing some good. Yeah. Some real good in the world, right? Yeah. Um, and I, 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 so there, so that's that's where the impact comes in, right? So yeah. it's kind of travel uh, blogging with a with a great underlying purpose as well. You're saving lives. I mean, I know some of these countries where you know they're 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 you know the kids are dying because of, of bad water, right? You know, I mean, it's a big initiative right now with Bill Gates in Africa and um, and 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 actually right here in Rochester. Um, there's a there's a there's two charities or, or I'll say nonprofits um, that that focus on building wells in African villages. Uh, yeah. There's one called uh, Water for South Sudan. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's sorry by a guy by an African. Uh, he's one of the lost. What are they called? The lost the lost kids. Uh, uh, that you know during the uh, 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 it was it was ethnic or a civil war and uh, many, many deaths. And his, this guy, Selva Dutt, his parents were killed. And uh, about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I think they called them the lost kids. Uh, thousands of, of orphans came to America and were adopted. And this kid, this guy, Selva Dutt, um, wrote a book called, uh, uh, I believe it was Water for South Sudan, um, or something. And I, that's not the name of the book. I'll remember it before we go. But, uh, but he started charity, and now he goes back and digs wells. And another guy I had on my podcast, James Harrington, started the Uganda, Uganda, Uganda Water Project. And he, uh, you know, Rochesterian that just uh, went over there to help out one day and ended up starting a nonprofit. He's building wells. And these, these guys, like you, they're saving lives, right? And it's so, so amazing. And, and so you've been able to combine doing great, you know, uh, service work, great charity, right? Uh, with your love of travel and and helping people to learn more about the adventures of the world, right? So, yeah. uh, so four five years ago, you were in a cube, yeah, in New York City, yeah, um, which you know could be defined as not fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, it has its days, had its own. If my if my ex boss is listening to this, he would like roll his eyes. So I loved him. <laughs> like, I loved working for him. I loved the business. It's just, I don't think you can put me in a cubicle behind a desk. I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, I, you know, I say the same thing. I was in a cube. Uh, you know, we, we met because of uh, uh, Lisa Williams has had us on her podcast called uh, uh, Corporate Entrepreneurship. Uh, and, you know, I was in a cube, you know, publicly owned company. Um, and, you know, same thing. Uh, and I tell people I liked my boss. You know, mm -hmm. like you, sounds like you liked your boss. My boss was a very nice guy. Yeah. Um, but I hated having a boss, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I tell him that to his face. I'm like, I loved you, but I, I just hated working for you, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't anything that he did. Yeah. Uh, I think a true entrepreneur, you feel like a caged animal. Yeah. You got to get out, you know? Yeah. Well, the day that I quit my job, I, uh, I mean, I loved working for my boss. He was amazing. And I learned so much from him. And so this day, I, you know, we keep in touch. He, you know, he gives me business and vice versa as much as I can. And, and the conversation we had the day that I quit is he said, I knew you weren't going to stick around for long. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, no. And he's like, cause it's just, yeah. you're extremely creative. 
you know, we'd go to meetings to pitch new clients. I was an account manager for an agency and we pitched new clients and I had all these amazing ideas. The clients would love it with no budget. <laughs> and I was like, you know what I mean? I was like, damn it. And I have to confine to these rules. And you know, he was just like, there was always something more there. And he's like, I admired you. This is why we hired you. And he's like, you know, and so he sent me his blessings when I left and we kept in touch and yeah. did it. And he was like, if it doesn't work out, you always have a place here. And I was like, well, that's good to yeah. know. Pretty sure I'm never coming back <laughs> so, right. to uh, you or anyone for that matter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and I think that's the way to go. You leave on a good note. And, you know, and and God forbid it doesn't work out. You haven't burned any bridges and and you could go back and you, you you know, you could always, you know, I love the story, Colonel Sanders, what was he like 68 when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken? So you can always go back, right? (laughs) (laughs) So, so so just tell us about, you know, the, 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 the journey you were working in corporate New York city um, and in the cube and, you know, what was going through your head to start this specific business? How did, how did, how did this, did you, did you decide that you were going to be an entrepreneur first and then, and then find the idea or did you have the idea first and then said, I got to go do this? Uh, that's such a good question. So I, I started, I working at corporate. I had my own side business. I was a social media manager for local businesses and it was a company called simply speak social. And I did that for the time that I was working at corporate as like the side hustle. Right. Um, and I enjoyed it, but I really, like you said, I didn't, I like that I was my own boss that I can do whatever I want. And that was kind of like the big selling point for me. Um, I love to travel and that was the thing for me. I had gone on vacations and I only got two weeks and I was like, that's it. Like two weeks is what it took me to get accustomed to the time change and like be comfortable with people and like do the things that I want to do. And it's not enough time. I want to spend more time in these countries. Honestly, I couldn't because I had to go back and go to work. Um, so I have this idea. I had an idea and I was, I was really unhappy. I believe that we are the creators of our happiness. Um, you get to decide the kind of life you want to live. And I believe that we have that power. Yes, there are circumstances and things that happen in the way um, that come in between our path or whatever, but you still get to decide how you choose to let that control you, right? And I was just in a, you know, in a place in my life where I was like, I want more. And I'm young enough that I don't have enough responsibilities that I'm tied down to something and I can take this risk. Uh, so I was like, why not? I have two degrees. I speak three languages. Um, I can do a lot. I can wash dishes. I can, I, I, I was, I was willing to put the ego aside and I just wanted to get out. And so I had this idea of traveling the world and I kept saying I wanted to change the world. And I remember I told my parents, <laughs> my dad is, uh, both my parents are entrepreneurs and very successful entrepreneurs, but they just kind of looked at me and they were like, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and that just like fueled the fire that just like pissed me off. Cause I was like, no, but I'm going to make right. this work. And they were like, how? And I'm like, I have no idea. And they're like, Jen, this is not. And in hindsight, you know, I think it's just a blessing to be naive and young um, because I've learned a lot. Uh, and if I could tell my younger self, I probably would have told her like, relax, give it one more year maybe have a little bit more of a plan. Um, but I just needed to get out. So I just left and I I knew I wanted to travel and I wanted to be a travel blogger. Um, and I knew I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to just travel to travel because there were so many people out there already doing it. Um, and I was a very, um, I think it's my personality. I've just, I'm very friendly. So I'd go to these countries and I would automatically make friends with locals. It just so happened that they were locals and they would show me the coolest places and I would really start to see the difference between, I mean, look, I I grew up pretty well and I'm super grateful for that. Um, But the fact that it was 2015 and there were countries where there was no clean water and kids were dying. I was like, to me, I was like, how is this possible? Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, It still does until this day. Uh, and it's something that until the day I die, I will continue to fight for. Uh, but it's just like, why is that even an option? Like, you know, you have to choose between getting a, a clean apple or, you know, drinking water. And it's like, and so to me, the, the water initiative was the idea that it is the, found, well, it's not the idea, it is, it's the foundation of what starts any civilized um, community, right? Uh, because with clean water, you have hygiene, which has health. And with health, you can do anything you want, right? I always say there are two things that stop people from living life and it's health and death. And if you don't have any of those two things, then you can't really do much. (laughs) Um, And so the foundation of what builds a strong community is that clean water initiative. 
Because once you have that, you have health and then you can have education and then so forth. And it's just a matter of implementing that correctly. And so, yeah, I kind of was like, I want to do something different. I don't want to be like everyone else. Um, and I piggyback off that. And I, I think I have this thing where that's kind of what I do with everything I create. I'm always like, all right, everybody's doing this though, but what's the other way we can do this? Like what's the other opportunity we can seek through this? What's the yin to the yang, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I love what you said just about a little bit ago where, you know, you didn't know how you were going to make it work. Yeah. I heard, yeah, like you didn't know how you're going to make money. Um, and, okay. and, and that's how I am, right? People think I'm freaking nuts. But I'm like, <laughs> I can't help it. I just know it's going to work out, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And the other way they say the, you know, uh, the true entrepreneur jumps off the cliff and builds the airplane on the way down, right? Yes. And, yes. Uh, and that's what you did. Oh, so. 100%. And, and I, the, thing, the only thing I did know, and I will pride myself is on this, and I say all the time, I'm extremely resourceful. Like I came from parents that are immigrants and entrepreneurs and they've built business, a successful business. And I've seen my dad and he's extremely resourceful and my mother. So that's something that I is ingrained in me, right? So I was in, and I'll give you a really good example. I used to dance. I used to dance. Uh, I danced for 14 years and I know how to dance salsa. So when I was traveling in Spain, I met up with a bunch of friends and I was like, who knows somebody that owns a dance studio? And lo and behold, somebody knew somebody that owns a dance studio. And I was able to go in and teach salsa classes. And I made anywhere between three to 400 euros a week from teaching salsa classes. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, so that to me was just like easy. You know what I mean? I was like, I need money. Got it. <laughs> like That's just kind of like how I've always done things. Um, I, I had a very, very small idea of how it worked like the blogging world and how to make money online, but I didn't have a concrete method. There was no, you know, proven roadmap that I was following or anything. I just knew that I was essentially a media outlet and that brands could work with me. Now, what are the smaller details of like pricing and negotiation and stuff that I figured out on my way, but it was, a, <laughs> it was definitely a journey. <laughs> oh, so what, so how do you make money with, with what you do? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's as easy as that. It's me being the media outlet, right? And brands pay me to push content, to create content. And content will look like something written, photography, video. Right. It really depends on what, the, what I'm distributing. Um, because I work with nonprofits on the ground, a lot of it is like project initiatives, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, I can't really name any names, but there'll be like a, you know, a hotel chain that wants to promote their new uh, sustainable... Hey. Sorry about that. <laughs> so you right. hear the new sustainable, um, you know, uh, launch that they have about a new product and how they're going to, you know, remove um, emissions, O2 emissions by 2025 or something like that. And they want to share their campaign or this project. So someone like me on the ground in, I don't know, Africa, uh, promoting this project and talking about it and how regular consumers, when they come and stay at these hotels, these are the benefits of staying at the hotel, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm just curious, what's your, what is your, uh, uh, your parents' business? So my parents, um, do real estate, mm -hmm. uh, before they did real estate, they had, um, a wholesale clothing business. And so the clothing business is no longer what it used to be. Right. So they dabbled into, uh, real estate and they've done pretty well with that. Excellent. So I, I imagine in Cuban immigrants, they came here pretty much with nothing and yeah. talk, talk about being resourceful. Right. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yep. yeah, yeah. I love, I love, you know, I think immigrants are it's something like 10 times more likely to be millionaires because they're so resourceful and so super yep. hyper focused on, you know, making something happen with their lives. Right. And, uh, and they're not afraid to work hard. Right. So, <laughs> yes. yep. That's definitely not, yeah. not something I lack. Yep. So I hear, you that dog. I hear the dog. It's all right. We're, we're under quarantine. Dogs are going to bark, you know, <laughs> I think there's a, there's a lot more, uh, I'll say, you know, forgiveness, right? Or, yeah. or benefit of the doubt during the quarantine, right? Yes. So, um, you know, people get up and they're, uh, uh, you know, they're wearing, uh, you know, a Zoom call. They get up and they're like, they forgot that they're wearing underwear, right? <laughs> We're forgiving that now, right? Uh, you know, for the record, I'm wearing pants, so. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so like, I'm dressed today. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had uh, someone on my podcast uh, last week and, uh, she said, it was so nice. And I said, why did you enjoy the interview? She goes, well, that and 
uh, it was so nice just to put makeup on and, and do my hair, you know, because uh, we do, you know, for, for those of you listening to this, we also have it on video at, uh, you know, the Avanti Entrepreneur YouTube channel. So we do both. Um, so, uh, so I love the story. You're following your dream. You didn't know exactly how it was going to happen, but you, you made it happen. You're resourceful. I love the salsa story. Um, I always tell people like, uh, I, I feel like you could drop me in, you know, parachute me down in the middle of Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. where I, you know, I'm obviously, you know, I don't speak the language. I've never been there. I don't know anything about the culture. Uh, but within, you know, a few days I would be finding a way to make a living. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe I would, uh, I would be opening up a, um, a, a, a pasta stand in, you know, uh, one of the downtown city. I don't know. I figure it out, you know? So yeah. yep, yep. I always have, I mean, even just traveling. So I left with, um, $14,000 and to me, I was like, Oh yes, this is so much money. I'll be fine. I mean, yeah. like I said, to be young, <laughs> innocent, naive, I was like, great. Huh. Yeah, um, yeah. It did. It lasted me for almost a year. It lasted me for about 10 months. And New York um, City, I mean, that is, you must have been eating, you know, like, you know. Oh, oatmeal. Yeah, ramen, you know. Oh, yeah, oatmeal, so, ramen. Yeah. Like, literally, I ate nothing. Yeah. I lost a lot of weight. I know, it's <laughs> great. Really good. That's right. You know, uh, po- poverty is a, is a great diet, right? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great diet. When The thing was that I wasn't paying for hotels because I was collaborating with hotels. Um, yeah. I started towards the end, I started to really launch, get some really good deals. So I was working with companies that would pay for everything, right? So I hope clue food was included, et cetera. So I really wasn't spending a lot of my money. I was only in the very beginning. And, and, and to be fair, at the very end, I was in Southeast Asia and you can go a long way with a dollar in Southeast Asia. Um, right. But at the end of it, I was back, I had moved to Australia. So I had traveled the world, it was a year in, and I was like, okay, I want to go to Australia for a year. So I've always wanted to go to Australia. And mm-hmm. I was like, why not? So I moved to Australia and I had, and I'm not even joking, I had $400 in my bank account, in my checking, and about 300 in my savings. And I get there the night of Australia. It's pouring rain. I get to my Airbnb. This is the first time I'd stayed in an apartment alone in three months. I had been in hostels and like retreats and resorts and all these things, but like I'd never really been completely by myself, not having to work, right? So I booked this Airbnb, which was stupid expensive for like three nights. And I'm there my first night and I got a bottle of wine, I got cheese, I'm watching Sex in the City, I'm painting my nails. <laughs> like, whoa! My best friend calls me. I hadn't seen TV in months. My best friend calls me and I'm like lit up. She's like, oh my God, you're there. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, hey, what's your plan? And she's like atypical. And she's like, what's your plan? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like painting my nails. And I'm like halfway through this bottle. So I'm already feeling it. And she's right. like, she's like, yeah, well, when, when do you start work? And like, where are your friends? And why aren't you going out tonight? And I'm like painting my nails. And I'm like, well, I don't have any friends. I just got here. I don't know anybody here. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, and I don't have a job yet. I guess I'll figure it out. And then I look up at the FaceTime and she's like, Jennifer, you are on the other side of the globe. She's like, how much money do you have in your bank account? I'm like, $400. Right. I'm just like painting my nails, like drinking my wine, just <laughs> smiling, laughing. And she's like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. And then I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it was like this energy of like stress just like hit my face. It was like I got right. smacked in the face and I just started crying. And I was right. like, holy shit what am I feeling? <laughs> and she was like no 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 you're gonna be fine you're gonna figure it out you always figure it out yeah. like, if there's anybody I know and I was like right. oh my god I gotta put you back I gotta put you back and she's like Jenna I'm so sorry and I just started I lost it I literally right. just started crying <laughs> and maybe 10 minutes into me crying I look at the bottle of wine and I'm like okay this you're halfway through it's 11 30 at night mm. you're not gonna get a job and you're not gonna find friends tonight <laughs> What you're going to do is you're going to finish the bottle. You're going to yeah. enjoy your frozen pasta. <laughs> and you're going to go to bed. And then tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and you're going to figure it out. And I swear to God, I swear on, I swear, I swear to God, in a matter of two weeks, I had a job, I had an apartment, and I had a group of friends. All in a week. I had moved yeah. into a brand new apartment. My rent was dirt cheap and I had my own room. It was beautiful. I had my first two clients in a matter of two weeks and I was making about three grand a month just off these two clients so it was just like i made it work yeah i literally i had no other choice because i had told myself that if by friday yeah i had ran through my 400 dollars and i was done that 
I was going to book the $300 with a ticket home or whatever, you know, find a way to book that ticket home because I wasn't able to stick around. Yeah. But so, I mean that, <laughs> well, I, I love that story so much because you will, you will never cry again, you know, over a situation like that because you know, yeah. I mean, your security uh, is, is in your, your, your confidence, right. Uh, of, of knowing that, that you have the ability to maybe have a dollar in your pocket and turn that into a thousand dollars a week later, right? Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's about the the confidence of knowing I wouldn't give up on myself, right? Oh yeah. And that yeah. was the, that was the biggest thing for me when I left in 2015, and uh, I was talking to my dad, and he was like, you know, if this is something you really want to do, we had like a heart to heart moment. And I said, Dad, I said, look, I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm like, I'm asking you to support me mentally, so that when I call you and I'm freaking out about life that I know my dad's going to pick up the phone and be like, I love you. You're going to be fine. Like you're going to yeah. be great. And I, I literally, I was like, like, there's, I would rather fail miserably at this and know that I tried and I gave it my all and I still failed than be here a year from now in the same job, doing the same thing, hating every single day. Yeah. Wondering what if like that to me, there's no, that's not worth it to me. You know? I think if you have a microphone, drop it. That was fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it is it is the truth, and it's just yeah. There, there's there's a there's a story behind the story there. Like, yeah. I feel like if your father did give you, let's say, he gave you five grand, yeah, um, you know, like you would have been more you would have been more comfortable. You yeah. would not have freaked out. Yeah. So therefore you might not not gotten those, those two clients and those friends in that new apartment uh, within a week. Right. Yeah. So, and I tell, uh, I tell, like I coach people starting businesses quite often and I tell them the best thing you can have is no money. Yeah. Because you are forced. Yes. To creative to find a better way to find a way, a solution. You know, if you have, I mean, a lot of companies, new companies fail because they have all this investor money. Yeah. And they just, they, they just burn through it without ever finding a really good solution because they're not forced to, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you were forced. You're like, all right, I got like a total of, of what, six, $700. And if I don't make something happen, I'm going to starve. I'm not going to be able to get back, right? Yeah. And yeah. that probably the thought of you like sleeping on the streets. I mean, that was like some great motivation, right? <laughs> it, it honestly, that's, that's what it was. And it was just like, there was also my ego, right? Because I wasn't about to call up my dad and, and be like, Hey dad, can you, I mean, if I would have done that, he would have done it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Because, but I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting my parents in that situation in that place yeah. um, for something I know I'm more than capable of accomplishing. Um, yeah. But when I did it, I remember like when I I'd signed the contract for my lease and everything, I was like, I had realized and it had gone by so fast that I literally stood there and the woman was like, are you okay? Like, why are you crying? And I was like, I got a job today and I just signed a lease to an apartment and I have $200 in my bank account. <laughs> she's, like, yeah. Yeah. she's like, you just signed this lease. And I was like, right. don't worry, you're going to get your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a job. I got a job. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I, a lot of times I ask people um, on the podcast about their, you know, crashed and almost burned story. Uh, but you, you already told me yours, right? I mean, that, yeah. you know, that, you know, that you could have crashed and burned, but instead, yeah. uh, you know, in the title of my book, you crashed and learned, right? Like you made it happen. Uh, you're down to a few hundred dollars and, and then you rose like the Phoenix. And, uh, and uh, so I love the story. I love the story. Um, b before we go, I mean, you know, your, your attitude and positivity, it's like contagious. Like I haven't met you face to face yet, but I feel like we've been friends forever. Um, you know, we <laughs> talked twice before, once on a group call and once just the two of us. And obviously I'm watching you through Zoom right now. And, you know, your energy is like, you know, bursting through my computer screen. So I'm sure some of this natural, right? I'm sure, yeah. you know, God gave you some great DNA. Uh, <laughs> and, but, but what else do you do to stay like on top with, with everything yeah. that life brings you to, uh, you know, try to try to give you some, some punch punches, you know? Um, in terms of business or you just mean like personally, just personal habits. I mean, do you, do you do things every day, every week yeah. to just, uh, really, you know, ensure that you're, you're, you're hedging your bets when it comes to staying, uh, you know, the full gen, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
it, it's mindset work, like doing all the tools and the work that I need. So, you know, the daily affirmations and journaling, just really just imagining the kind of life I want to live and, and continuing to show up as that, um, as if I already have it. And I know it's almost very delusional and, and it's not, it's very magical or woo. Some people call it whatever you want to call it. But I think that it really is just that is knowing that because I've come this far, there is no plan B, there is no plan C, like it's just, it's eventually, you know, where I, where I want to be in life is it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And I'm going to enjoy the ride when I get there. Um, I have been fortunate to have experienced a lot and through that traveling and, you know, as well and stuff like that. But even before this career, I just, I definitely learned a lot about life at a young age. I lost somebody very close to me and it just changed my perspective on how I look at life, the things I want to accomplish, who I want to be in the world. And that's just something that I remind myself every single day. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say it every single day. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because that's the, that's the work, right? Is c committing to that discipline. Yeah. Well, it's working. It's working. You, you're, like I said, your, your, your vibrant love of life is contagious. So uh, we were with Lisa Williams, we were on a group call with like 20 people and it was a whole Brady Bunch Zoom grid thing, you know, yeah. and you, you, your energy just stuck out to me. Right. And, uh, and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to email her. I want her on my podcast. Right. And oh, well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yeah, absolutely. So again, if, if, uh, if people also oh, in, and so you, I, I, I told you I wanted to promote your new, um, you have a new master class. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Tell us about if somebody wants to take, what is, what is it about and how can they take it? Um, so part of me being a blogger is that two years ago, I started teaching other people how to build online businesses and brands and stuff. And so, and that's been amazing because it's a lot of fun to be able to see people grow through online space. So I will, ha I have a masterclass, it's a free masterclass on the exact three things you need to start an online business. Mm -hmm. And I talk about mindset. I talk about having a message, right? Finding that problem and then creating that visibility of what that looks like for you based on your business needs, et cetera. And so it's free. It's awesome. And yeah. Free and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <That's really good. laughs> I'm getting, I mean, so far so good. The feedback is wonderful. People are happy with it. They're walking away with some solid stuff mm -hmm. and some light bulbs are going off. So to me, yeah. I think that's pretty good. That is great. And well, for free, I mean, it's, I think yeah. it's a great, it's a great first step into working with the great Jen Marilla. So very excited. And that's at your website, jenmarilla.com. Yes, yes, yes. I will actually um, give you, I'll send you the link so you can drop it in because it's a different Yeah, we'll link. put it in the show notes, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, well, Jen, thank you so, so much. So excited to have met you and uh, you're in my world now. I told you when we spoke last that um, I really, it's very selfish why, why I wanted to do this podcast is because I want you to remember me when you are like this, this global TV show and uh, like just world famous and, and I'm going to say, you know, Hey, uh, here's a link. Remember, remember me, you know, <laughs> I, I will not forget you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I know you, I know, I really feel in my heart that I'm talking to somebody who's like a rocket ship, who's like shaking on the platform right now about to explode. So uh, really you got something going on and I'm really excited and uh, I'm glad you, you, shared some heartbeats with me today. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the Avanti family learned a lot as well. So thank you so much. And I wish you thank massive you continued me. success. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you Avanti family for listening and or watching. You can listen to this again and again and again. And all the other podcasts I've done, almost 200 now at AvantiEntrepreneur.com. Thank you so much. Have a great day and stay awesome.